Riley here. Welcome to the No Spin News for Monday, April 10th, 2023. Stand up for your country. So I hope you had a nice weekend. I did. Um, low key, you know, Easter and uh, went to church and had a nice dinner and urchins were here and everything worked out. Time really whizzes by, though, doesn't it? I mean, I talked to you last on Thursday and now it's Monday and I was like, Three hours ago, I thought I talked to him. I Zoom. And when you get older, not that I am, but when you get older, time goes faster because, there's, you know, there's a clock on it. And so you're more conscious of it. Um, and, um, you know, there wasn't much news over the weekend, but the politics is just insane. And that is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. So... The Pentagon puts out a report on Afghanistan, and the Pentagon is like any other government agency, all right? So the president, Biden, is the commander-in-chief. If you are in the Pentagon, you work directly for Biden. If you do anything that Biden doesn't like or his advisors don't like, you're going to get into trouble. It's the same bureaucracy. People think the military is somehow carved out and independent it is not so anyway this report on afghanistan by the pentagon of course takes no responsibility for the debacle that we saw in august 2021 i mean it's no responsibility at all it says quote put it up on the screen and for those listening on the radio i'll read it to you The departing Trump administration had left the Biden administration with a date for withdrawal. That's true, but no plan for executing it. And after four years of neglect and in some cases deliberate degradation, crucial systems, offices and agency functions that would be necessary for safe and orderly departure were in disrepair, unquote. Well, that's bull. Okay, I mean, it was nothing in disrepair. The Trump administration negotiated a withdrawal, and in return, the Taliban didn't kill any Americans for 18 months. But Biden took over and could have done exactly what Biden wanted to do. This was not a treaty signed by Congress. Biden could have changed it, could have upgraded it, could have done whatever he wanted. He did nothing. In fact, he made the situation worse. Now, the National Security Council Spokesperson John Kirby, again working directly for Biden, here's what he says. Go. Despite having his options curtailed, President Biden led a deliberate, rigorous, and inclusive decision-making process that was responsive to facts on the ground. Well, um, I don't think so. Responsive to facts on the ground. Here's what Biden said on July 8th, 2021, a month before... The Taliban took over. Go. Is the Taliban takeover of Afghanistan now inevitable? No, it is not. Because you have the Afghan troops have 300,000 well-equipped, as well-equipped as any army in the world, and an air force against something like 75,000 Taliban. It is not inevitable. So this is just another giant lie. If Biden couldn't do anything, he was handcuffed. Yeah, it was a deterioration. And then they go, the guy himself, a month before it collapses. Oh, no, no way. Taliban going to do that. And now, because people's memories are so short and the corrupt media doesn't care and lies about it, Biden's putting himself up as a victim like he always does. Border, Trump's fault. Inflation, Trump's fault. I mean, come on. You would think that the nation, the collective, we the people, would be outraged by this deceit, by this dishonesty. It's not a matter of opinion. Biden said to the nation, no, Afghan army, they can hold their own, 300,000 of them. And then they didn't even fire a shot. 
They just surrendered. So the Biden administration didn't know that? Didn't make plans for that? And then you saw all the pictures and all the chaos. 13 Americans killed at the airport, or was it 18, something like that. I mean, it was just horrible. But again, Biden gets away with this because the press covers up for him. Even even the so-called conservative media didn't jump on this story the way it should have. By demonstrating that this is a pattern of behavior. It's not just about Afghanistan. All right, so uh, November 16th, 2007, boy, again, time goes fast. I showed up in Kabul, Afghanistan, and I was there for uh, four days. Um, And uh, alongside me, uh, the older man is Colonel David Hunt, who came with us as an advisor. We brought a crew from uh, America, and we had a pretty good look. Um, and it was not a great situation over there. I mean, and, and I said that to people. I said it was necessary because of the Al Qaeda 9 11 stuff. But in the end, I mean, the casualties were 2,400 uh, U.S. personnel killed and 21,000 wounded. 21,000. And that conflict, you know, raged for 20 years. Uh, pretty much, give or take. Um, and it didn't come out our way, once again. Now, we did stifle any al-Qaeda attacks on the USA. We did that. But Afghanistan is the biggest mess in the world right now. The chairman of the Fed is promising more pain ahead. Last year, stocks dropped a whopping 20%. 2023 could be worse. You are right to be worried. So call the only precious metal dealer I trust, American Hartford Gold. They will show you how to protect your savings and retirement accounts by diversifying your portfolio with physical gold and silver. Since I've been a client and spokesperson, the price of gold has appreciated more than 35%. So please call today and they'll have physical gold and silver delivered right to your door or put inside your IRA or 401k. They have thousands of satisfied customers and have the highest rating in the country with an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau. Please tell them Bill O'Reilly sent you, and they will give you up to $5,000 of free silver on your first order. Please call 866-501-5201. That's 866-501-5201, or text Bill to 65532. Again, that's 866-501-5201, or text BILL to 65532. Tennessee. So this is an interesting story, but it's a local story. So after the shooting of the three, killing of the three nine-year-olds in their school in uh, Memphis, um, the Tennessee legislature refused to Uh, crack down or pass new gun laws, and three Democrats dissented. That's fine. But they did it in an illegal way. They went on the floor of the legislature in Nashville, and they disrupted the entire proceeding. Let's have a little natural sound there. All right, so two of them were expelled, all right? The ones that led that um, demonstration on the floor, not outside. That that was a mistake. They should have been censured, not expelled, because that gives the other side, the far left, high moral ground. Look at this, it's racist, the guy's black, so it's racist, of course. But if they had censured, I think that would have been a better deal. And you, with the, uh, the admonishment, you do it again, you're out. That's what I would have suggested. Censure. So you can't have people with bulldo- bullhorns or bulldogs in, in a session of the legislature. I mean, that's just, you can't. So anyway, 
For every reaction, there's an overreaction in this country. The Tennessee firing in these two, kicking them out of the House, was an overreaction. But they could have been punished, should have been punished, in my opinion. Governor DeSantis in Florida is pushing the toughest immigration crackdown in the nation. New bill, not passed yet, probably will be. Says this, people could be charged with felonies in Florida for sheltering, hiring, and transporting undocumented immigrants. Hospitals must ask immigration status and report it to the state of anyone treated. Invalid out-of-state uh, driver's licenses if issued to undocumented immigrants. So if you have a license and you are not a citizen and you go to Florida from a license with New York or Massachusetts, they can arrest you in Florida. You don't have a license down there. That's what it would say. And direct the Florida Department of Law Enforcement to provide assistance to federal authorities in all immigration cases. This is going to pass in Florida. So DeSantis is staking out his migrant programs in response to the open border Biden policy. And on the subject of the president, here's what he did today, 1015. He had another Easter egg roll. I think this was like the 18th Easter egg roll. Um, Easter's over, but I don't know if the president knows that or not. There's the bunny. There's Jill. Uh, they rolled Easter eggs. And that's all he did the entire day. <laughs> okay. Your tax dollars at work. Then Amari shows up in Belfast, Ireland. Um, don't exactly know when he's leaving. And that's security over there because they uncovered some kind of crazy plot already. Like the extremists in Ireland are very, very few now. So the troubles have been put aside, but they're still there. Still terrorism. So Biden's going over. He's going to meet with the British prime minister and the uh, Republic of Ireland prime minister. Remember, Northern Ireland and Southern Ireland, two different countries, which is the genesis of all the troubles. So I, he's going to be over there, Biden. It's like a vacation. He's not going to, what's he going to do? You know, have a few Guinness. You know, what is he going to do? <laughs> There's nothing to do. Doesn't affect us. Hey, smart life. So I get a lot of letters from concierge members uh, asking where they should go in the world and how they should go and where they should stay. And that's one of the services we render. If you are BillOReilly.com concierge member, you can ask me anything about anything. And a lot of people are going on summer vacation. And I think I, I've been to 85 countries and I, I can give you a pretty good view of the world. And not everywhere, but many places I know what to do and where to go and where to stay and things like that. But I am getting a flood of these letters. So I decided in the Smart Life tonight, um, a lot of people want to know in the USA, they want beach vacations shoreline vacations. I got six good ones for you. Put the first three on up. Out of Banks, North Carolina, from Bald Head Island, down on Cape Fear, all the way north to Virginia. Outer Banks are super beach vacations. Not crazy expensive, beautiful place. Florida Panhandle, a Destin area, again, whole area on the Gulf of Mexico. It's hot. It's hot down there in the Panhandle, much hotter than the Outer Banks. Um, but it's beautiful and a lot to do. And then the North Shore of Massachusetts. Now, people don't think about this. Everybody goes to Cape Cod on the South Shore. But I like the North Shore, the Cranes Beach, Essex area, all the way up to Newburyport, Marblehead, very, very nice shore vacation. West Coast, Big Sur, Monterey. OK, that area is, I think, the most beautiful beach area in the country. Now, you got to book it, boy. It gets booked up like crazy. But Monterey, Carmel, Big Sur, fabulous. North County, San Diego. Talking Lucadia here, these beach communities. It's not the craziness of San Diego proper, it's north. And then finally back to the East Coast, Bar Harbor, Maine, Acadia National Park, stunning coastline. Cannot go in the water in Maine. And it's chilly in uh, Big Sur and, excuse me, in Big Sur and 
San Diego too, but in Maine, <clears throat> you got to have a full wetsuit to go in there. So there you go, smart life. Hope it helps this day in history. April 10th, 1947, Brooklyn Dodgers purchased the contract of Jackie Robinson from the Montreal Royals, a minor league team. Four days later, April 15th, ja Robinson was in the big leagues <clears throat> on the National League, Bush and Dodgers. My father took me, I was four, to Ebbets Field, and Jackie played. And um, three years after he was Rookie of the Year, in 47, he was MVP and got the highest paid contract in the major leagues. Now, Jackie Robinson went through hell because in 1947, America was a bigoted country. Still, I mean, it's pretty shocking. Not everybody, but doesn't take everybody. So Robinson got it from the fans and from some of the other players. But he was a fabulous, fabulous baseball player, broke the color barrier, and a hero. Jackie Robinson was a hero. And he got the contract 76 years ago today. Back with Mail and a final thought in a moment. Bill O'Reilly here for Lone Star Transfer. If booking your timeshare has been difficult in the past, you know it's been almost impossible lately. Most clients are shocked to learn that their timeshare is now available to the public, severely limiting booking options. Many owners are upset their yearly dues have nearly doubled during this maintenance fee season. For well over a decade, this family-owned company has had the pleasure of helping more than 18,000 owners legally and permanently get out of their timeshare fees. With an A-plus rating at the Better Business Bureau and more than 900 five-star testimonials, Lone Star Transfer is a company you can trust. Lone Star Transfer guarantees the release of all liability to your timeshare in writing and in a specific time frame. So please call my friends today for a free no-obligation consultation at 855-551-7066, 855-551-7066, or online at LoneStarTransfer.com. All right, let's go to the mail. David, concierge member, Bill, you asked if Biden's upcoming visit to Ireland helps America. I would say yes, since he'll be out of the country. But he doesn't run the country. The other people do. So it's not going to matter. Greg Bruno, Staten Island, New York. What do you think about a Trump Gabbard ticket? The problem with Tulsi Gabbard is she's an isolationist. Be tough to have Trump run with her. James Day, Batavia, New York. What is the going on with the dollar? I'm hearing we're going crypto and digital. Look, I know this conspiracy dollar stuff is all over the place. Ignore it. If I thought there was something to it, I would tell you. Okay, it's just conspiracy BS. Renaud Amari, Medford, Oregon, and we thought the country was falling apart during Vietnam and everything else going on in the 60s. There's no comparison to what's happening today. I wish more people would discuss this in some way to drive home the seriousness of it. People know. I mean, the, the people who, who live in a bubble and don't pay attention, uh, Renard, they don't know, but they don't care. But anyone aware knows the division. Wes, our government uh, is way more concerned about transgender than the Chinese or the Russians. Probably right. Teresa, concierge member. Thank you, Teresa. I have never seen this country be in the situation that it is. We can't talk to each other without being labeled, labeled a racist. I remember years ago in conversation between two persons of different persuasion was enjoyable. No longer. I, I still make fun of my liberal friends and they give it back to me. But I know what you're saying. And, and I tell people, don't even bother. Don't even bother. If you know somebody, you're not going to change their mind, don't bother. You can refer them here. You can do that. But um, don't you do it. Barry Hart, Shures, Texas. Uh, I love the team normal. Uh, can I form my own team? Yes. Barry, get the team normal stuff. I was wearing my team normal uh, shirt this weekend. There I am. How about that, huh? It's only about 50 degrees. So I had to have, uh, but it is a nice, nice shirt, particularly if you're a golfer. You've got the navy blue, too. 
and we get the Team Normal hats and mugs and everything. But if you want to form your own Team Normal, get them all geared up. You know, buy the gear, go on out, play softball, go to the beach, whatever you want to do. Uh, 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 Mark Jager, Barn Gut, New Jersey. Just watch Killing Jesus on Good Friday, a perfect way to reflect on the dead. Killing Jesus, the book and the movie, it's worth the time. Okay, the word of the day is no yawping. Y A W P I N G. No yawping. When writing Bill at BillOReilly.com, Bill at BillOReilly.com, name in town if you wish to opine. Back with a final thought. Thank you for watching the No Spin News. To watch the full episode anytime on BillOReilly.com, please sign up to become a premium or concierge member. Visit BillOReilly.com to sign up and start watching today.